our first open mic buddy. This is my neighbor, Harry Rolnick. He's a world traveler and a crazy reverend. Come on up, Harry. Harry's written more books than I've written poems. That's very kind of you. It's my first time here. Now, I want to talk about my friendship with Colonel Gaddafi, which lasted for a oh, couple of hours, but we're going to have to do this whole thing in five minutes. Now, I got to know Colonel Gaddafi when I was going to a cocktail party in Malaysia, and I met the Libyan cultural attaché. <clears throat> I asked how he got his job, and he said he got it through his brother-in-law, who was the deputy tourist minister of Libya, and was very, very sad because nobody was going to Libya for tourism. And I said, well, in the first and second century, they sure did, because the Greeks and Romans would keep their boys, and they would keep their girls, and they would keep their villas and their money, all in North Africa. He said, well, how then can I possibly tell my brother-in-law to bring more tourists? I said, you should get a well-known writer, who was me in Asia, and you should have him go to Libya and write some brochures for your son. That sounds wonderful. Would you do that? I said, I would love to do that. A couple of weeks later, I got the call, and I went to Tunisia, where I got my visa. But instead of flying to Libya, I went down through the desert, up through the desert, and up through the desert to Libya, where I got to Tripoli, the capital. Well, I did see a lot of ruins and a lot of things, and they kept promising me that I would soon meet Brother Colonel Gaddafi. In the meantime, the foreign ministry had asked me what I should do, since I was living in Bangkok, then about the Muslim revolutionaries. They want two million dollars from us. Should we give it to them? I said, I'm basically a peacemaker, but I mean, you know, you do whatever you want to do. And I thought to myself, what's this Jewish boy from Yonkers being asked whether he should support any Muslim group who are rebelling in some strange place in Southeast Asia? Anyway, they were fine with that. And one day came the call that I would be meeting Brother Colonel himself. And they would pick me up in a car from this little hotel I was staying in. This was fine. So what should I wear? They said, wear a clean shirt. I said, I will find one for Brother Colonel anything. They said, we will give you the protocol. And the director of protocol came and I was in the car and he said, first, you do not call him Colonel Gaddafi, you call him Brother Colonel. I said, I will call him Brother Colonel. Next, you will not say what he says to us. It's private, off the record. I said, off the record. Most important, no pictures. I said, but Colonel Gaddafi looks so good, so dapper, so dashing. Yes, outside, but inside, the only way to take pictures is when you see twinkle in his eye. A twinkle in Colonel Gaddafi's eye. I must look for that. No twinkle, no picture. No twinkle, no picture. Fine. We got there, went into an office, not the palace, it was off the record. He came in with a beautiful little, what we now would call a sort of Nehru jacket or Mao jacket, and he sat down and glared at me. No twinkle, definitely. And he said, why are you here? And I said, well, Colonel Gaddafi, I, 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 I was hired to write brochures to bring uh, tourists into Libya. He said, you think tourists would come to Libya? Why should they come here? I said, because of the friendship and the warmth of the beach. He says, never mind, never mind. I want to know what you find wrong with my country. What's wrong with it? First of all, um, nobody's drinking. You don't allow drinks. Libya used to have fine drinks. You don't understand. We will never drink, never drink, never drink. We do not do something. I said, secondly, there's no street signs in English, all in Arabic. He looked at me and he smiled and he said, you from where? I said, New York. He said, how many street signs? Arabic, New York. Mm -hmm. When you have Times Square in Arabic language, we put English on our signboards here, which I thought was very clever of him to say. He then asked a few more questions about what I liked and what I didn't like, and then came the big thing. Tell me, what religion are you? Well, now, in the Middle East, you have a couple of choices. If it's down in the sort of low class, you make uh, a thing, you, you, you get one of these stupid religions, Congregationalism, Presbyterianism, Methodism, anything which they've never heard about, which is supposedly Christian, and they'll go along with it and forget it. If you're with an intellectual, you must put in one phrase, and I said, I'm Jewish, but I'm not Israeli. That goes into one simple breath. But he, Colonel Gaddafi, had been raised on radio, 
Cairo and Gamal Abdel Nasser had instilled in him tremendous anti-Semitism. This, when you raised up that way, this happens. And I had to be honest with him. I said, Brother Colonel, I've got to tell you, I'm an atheist. He said, you're an atheist? What? You don't believe in God? And he said it with the same passion that my Yemeni shopkeeper says to me, what, you don't have change for $20? And so I said, I don't believe in God. He said, we are going to change all of that. He then called the Idris, called a boy from beyond, and he carried a huge crate to me. And Colonel Gaddafi lifted up a huge book, which was the Holy Quran. Now, the Holy Quran is only about 64 pages long. This had every single commentary, Talmudic thing, everything that there was. I still have this book which holds up my computer screen. And he said, when you see this, you will believe in God. And I said, Colonel, Brother Colonel, I must tell you, if I can get on the plane without paying overweight charges, maybe, maybe I will believe in God at that point. And he actually laughed. He said, I must go to Nurkuch right now. And I thought that was his Russian mistress. But no, Nurkuch is the capital of Mauritania. He said, you will come to me. I want to kiss you on both your cheeks. You are very, very nice. He kissed me on both my cheeks. He was not grizzled like most Arab leaders who I've met. He then went off to Nuakuch, and I went back to my little hotel. And many years later, it has turned out that he was a mass killer. Even at that time, he had destroyed a country, almost destroyed a world. But for me, he was always brother colonel, the man without a twinkle in his little eyes. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.